Welcome mountain bikers. Welcome dentists. If you saw that new Yeti up there, you know what we're talking about. Welcome. John Simonetti, vital tester. Does he look a little tired to you guys? Do you think he had his uh, alarm go off and then he kept sleeping this morning? How, how come you're so haggard? Big day on the tools yesterday and then the classic case of uh, five more minutes this morning. Waking <laughs> up to your call an hour later. That was my alarm. <laughs> Well, thankfully, I'm so anal. I wanted to be three hours early, so we we're still two hours early, and it worked out just fine. If you saw that intro, we're talking today about the new Yeti SB160. It's a dual 29er. It replaces the SB150. Coming to you live from Phoenix. And while talking about bikes is pretty fun, I think riding them is more fun. Do you think riding them is more fun than talking yeah. about them? Yeah. All right. Well, let's watch Johnny. Ride also, the SB what up, Teo? <laughs> oh, Teo in the chat, what's happening? That's the thing. Yeah. Please join in the chat. Half the reason we're doing this live is so we can answer any questions you might have about the bike. We're going to do our best to cover everything, but yeah, let us know what you think. We already saw someone say it looks like a session, which I don't know. That's pretty funny, but it, it doesn't. So Yeah, we have a session here. If you want to <laughs> Pull it out. <laughs> Let's watch Johnny rip up some trails in Arizona somewhere. And then we'll get back and talk bike tech. Okay. Hey, Richie, you know it's a lot carrying the whole country on your back at all the races this year. So I figure let's take a day off. Boosh, what about that last brapper? <laughs> Those are the last two days hanging out here in Arizona. And uh that was a little wide eyes brown pants moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rip. Fun to say the least. As you can tell, Johnny rips on the bike and seems like the Yeti's doing its thing pretty darn well. Let's uh let's go away from the trail and become bike nerds and talk about the new SB160. I'll run through the frame highlights and Johnny can discuss a little bit more because he was at the media camp with Yeti, but the SB160 has a new switch infinity assembly on the T-series frames. We'll dig into that as a new threaded bottom bracket, which has some technology around it that seems like, oh, threaded bottom bracket, that's a highlight. Well, there's some uniqueness to it. Um, it's got a higher clearance down tube, a dual density down tube protector. It's UDH compatible. The cable routing is... Um, fully internal, it's enclosed, um, so cable management is easy, and there's a, um, a locker up at the top there by the head tube. It's 
compatible with longer dropper posts. They use sealed Enduro Max bearings, <clears throat> and there's a floating collet axle pivot design, which we'll talk about more. But when you were at the camp, were any of these things stand out to you as something you know you hadn't really thought about much? Uh, no, none of them really stood out too much, but it was cool to see like the down two protectors got like a rubber backing and then a hard plastic outer shell you can replace. Mm. And then UDH kind of obviously makes sense. And then, uh, the, yeah, the bottom bracket shell they touched on, it's, uh, instead of it getting kind of added to the frame, it's molded from like the first step, like fully into it. And the ISCG tabs are attached. So that's a really solid interface. If you're going to hit it on something, knowing that that's all pretty solid. And then, uh, yeah, the bearing is getting moved from the carbon to the aluminum is yeah a good call and yeah and we'll go into that right now let's take a look here's the sb150 of your and it's been out for what four years now yeah four yeah. years and then yeah and so we'll boom morph into the new 160 back to the 150 just kind of see the differences between the two bikes 150 to 160 and then as we get in here you can see some of the visual differences <clears throat> With that upper link, we have the the 160 on the left, the 150 on the right. <clears throat> and here's another angle, the 150 on the left, the 160 on the right. <clears throat> you can see how um, the link on the 150 clamps down onto the carbon, whereas on the new bike, the carbon clamps down onto the link. And they explain why. They have this floating collet pivot design, and all the bearings are now pressed into the aluminum linkage assembly instead of the carbon swing arm or the front triangle and the result that yeti is claiming is perfect alignment and smooth suspension so seems like a kind of a logical thing to do to put the bearings into the links instead of the carbon frame yeah and it seems like it'd make for more like a rigid interface i would think just having it yep. you know you can you can miss a line of bearing into carbon a little and it could yeah compromise it where the link seems way easier to just work on and maintain for sure so let's get into geo <clears throat> now we've got some notes i've highlighted the kind of the geo that people like to look at on the left and compared to the 150 the 160 has half a degree slacker head tube angle it's now at 64 instead of 64 and a half reach grew by five mils across all sizes chain stay length is now size specific which is pretty sweet and it's longer across the board so on the SB150, chain stays were 433 on every size, no matter what. So pretty stubby little rear end, and now they've grown them. Um, and seat tube angle, the effective seat tube angle is half a degree steeper at 77 and a half degrees. So you were on the size XL, right? Yeah, size XL. And uh, yeah, I was pretty happy to have something a little more than a 433 chain stay. And uh, yeah, it was pretty comfortable. We'll get into the updated Switch Infinity. And again, this comes on the Turk series models, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, sorry, the T-series. Um, but yet he's claiming there's improved sensitivity, durability, and strength thanks to new seals and bearing hardware. And this kind of gives you an idea of what the Switch Infinity does. It's, it's a replacement for a lower link on kind of like a VPP design so they can have their own design without you know having to deal with any lawyers. Um, yeah, shows you how the component explodes there a little bit. You've got the bearings, got the Kashima coated goods, and that's the heart of the SB150, or sorry, 160. All right, there's three colors available. If you're on the live chat, pick your favorite. There's turquoise, there's cobalt, which we have, which I will say looks better in person than it does in the rendering. But then there's that radium, and you've seen all three, John. What do you like the best? Yeah, I thought the radium was one that caught my eye the most. It's a little more neon than you can see in that picture, but also the blue that we have is better than it looks on there. It's a little bit brighter in the light and looks really good. And then, yeah, let's see in the live chat. Richard, they will take your money. Um, <laughs> Builds start at 6,700 and go up from there. Frames at 5,000. Yeah, so that's where we're at. So there's, you can see here, there's the Turk models and the C series. The C series use a little bit less complicated carbon layup, and they also feature the original Switch Infinity components down below, not the updated one. So your build's at $6,700 or $7,000 with those. 
you get into the Turk models, the T1, T3, T4, those all feature the new Switch Infinity and the carbon frame layup that's a little bit more sophisticated. Um, it takes their time a little bit more to get it done, I guess. But we, ch we tested, well, Johnny tested the $10,500 T3. So we'll get into those goods and what Johnny thought. So when did you go to camp? September? Yeah, it was like mid-September. Okay, so in September, Johnny went to the media launch for this. And yeah, why don't you tell us what happened there and what it was like getting on the bike for the first time? Yeah, it was cool. We got the bike set up in Breckenridge at the house Yeti had there and then uh, went up to around Keystone and did a couple of rides that popped out around 12.5, I think. So that was a <laughs> that was a nice welcome back after your broken <laughs> wrist for three months. But um, yeah, it was a ton of fun straight away. I mean, it was, yeah, the bike was comfortable from the get-go and they kind of got it set up in the rear and I just set up the front the way that I normally would and yeah, didn't take didn't take long to get used to. They did a really good job with it, and yeah, did some high country rides. Yeah, it looks pretty high alpine up there. What was the what was the top you got to? Uh, twelve five, I think. Coming from Phoenix, how's how's breathing that only, one? Only ten times the elevation from where my house is. <laughs> so not bad. That's sweet. <laughs> All right, let's talk about how the yes the SB one hundred and sixty performs on the trail. Hey Richie, you got know it's a lot of the carrying the, the whole country on your back all the yeah. races this year so figure let's take a bike? day off when you, when you got it did it <laughs> take any getting used to was it you know what would you think not really I mean, as soon as i got on it i just kind of thought like low the front felt quite low so okay. i mean my seat height's pretty high and so pedaling i felt kind of on top of the bike a lot reaching down and the the it took a little getting used to but it, it was like on a steep climb it wasn't the worst you know like getting to lean forward and stuff uh or having to lean forward and then descending yeah it took a little getting used to but leaning forward again helped a lot and uh yeah on the trail i mean it just feels like it's got a ton of traction and it feels like it can generate speed well mm. and you know you would kind of think like all right going into some like harder compressions may have some issues if it's got that much traction but didn't didn't really feel it bottom out if it was and Going into rough stuff, it just was pretty insane how how fast you can go and just still feel like you're in total control on mm -hmm. the bike. So really fun to ride, and then yeah, super playful as well. So kind of get the best of both worlds. It's a 33 pound bike. It's to me that's really light for a bike of this size. Yep. And when I mean, you have to consider it's an XL frame, I don't know how much that would add over like a small, but still 33 pounds for a bike that you can ride like a downhill bike is a lot of fun to ride. Um, and it kind of rewards rider input. It's really responsive. It doesn't take a lot of effort to change direction on. Um, yeah, but it, then it, it holds the line really well. For such a pretty big travel bike, and you're saying how well it can handle kind of the smashy stuff, it seems like you're able to flick it and move it pretty well. Like it's a balanced ride. Yeah, super, super snappy for the size of it. And, uh, that's even with the chain stays that it's doing on this bike. Uh, I think 10 mil over the old one, which is pretty significant, mm -hmm. but still not super long, which is nice. It's uh, yeah, just seemed to work well kind of everywhere. Cool. Stock bars were 20 mil and you put 38s on? Yeah, I put some oh! DD bars on there. So same, same, same and, um, and then yeah, I just added this. Okay. Solved it. Sweet. Hey, Richie. All right, let's talk about some of the strengths of the bike. You touched that, touched on that a little bit in, you know, the riding impressions here. But where do you feel like the bike excels? Uh, again, like tracking through rough stuff was really impressive, and it just the suspension feels really active. So I felt like anytime you could open it up on the trail and like go go fast it just it just felt really good to go fast on and it uh okay. yeah again like the responsiveness of it too just the lightweight it it was pretty easy to change direction and just kind of carry that speed into stuff you wouldn't think to normally mm. so did you ever feel like you found the limit of the bike no like it <laughs> 
like that the last clip in this video where we kind of jump and slide around the turn it was kind of like an oh shit i've never <laughs> never gone that fast but it felt fine to mm -hmm. do so yeah i don't know it, it's pretty legit like yeah what do you what are some strengths about the build kit i mean i know price is something we'll discuss but yeah like ten thousand plus dollars for a bike with aluminum wheels kind of hurts but at the same time they don't take away from the performance at all and it is you know kind of the best aluminum wheel set you can buy um other than that everything on the build kit makes sense like it's a it's a solid enduro race bike it's a solid trail bike it seems like it'd be a really reliable bike um seeing the live chat here not everyone's a fan of SRAM brakes but yeah i mean like i've never had an issue with the codes they're they're quite reliable i think mm -hmm. um access shifting yeah no issues there and then uh fox transfer posts we we didn't experience any issues with during the test period yep. but yeah the whole thing's sick like it's got the new exo plus tires that are i'd say more comparable to a double down than the old ones yeah because so, you're a big dude smashing rocks and like did you have any issues with these um no with the tires no and i've ridden a couple of bikes with the new exo plus and They've got a ton of sidewall support. It's really nice. So that's another strong point of this bike actually is the cornering. Um, I'm not sure if it's still like a vertical axle path. I know Yeti used to be really about that. I think that's part of it. Um, it doesn't seem like the bike grows or shrinks yet in three compressions. So when you're turning, it's like a really solid foundation to kind of lean into. And it it uh, got a really like rigid feeling to the frame. And then, yeah, those tires having a more rigid sidewall just yeah cool works really well all right you're 225 pounds 225 what's your tire pressure uh i run 29 rear and 27 front okay on xo plus yeah, yeah. on xo too on regular xo as well yeah okay. I've, i mean i haven't ran them in a while but run those for a long time same pressures and then yeah cool and just flicking rocks into the sunset look at that <laughs> all right let's go into what some of the weaknesses of the bike may be i know price is unavoidable when you look at the price five thousand dollar frame the cost of the the turk builds and even the c builds that you know they have decent spec but you know we we did the vital mtb survey um analysis about a week or so ago and we had a, almost ten thousand people or over ten thousand people take the survey and the average cost of a vital mtbers bike is fifty one hundred dollars according to our survey. So, a vital empty beer, the average one's not going to be able to get into one of these SB one sixties, which starts at sixty seven hundred bucks. So, we all know that price is going to be a weakness for most people. But price aside, are there are there any weaknesses that you see on the bike? Uh, potential weaknesses that people might consider: there's no storage in the frame. There's no pool mounts or anything yep. i think that's justified by they're making the best bike for their team and their team's sponsored by one up so they have a solution to carry a tool without putting it on the frame and then you know they make a nice tube strap for it i think that's functionally the same thing um so it's not not too much of a, a con but potential one if you're a consumer no no flip chips or anything yeah. i don't think it needs it but someone might um I saw someone comment about the 150 hitting pedals a lot. I, the riding here is super rocky, and I, I rarely hit the pedals. Cranks still look good. Um, and then, yeah, nothing really else stood out about it. Yeah. Yeah, aside from the price and kind of like what you already hit on, just the wheel spec for the price seems a bit off, even though the wheels are super solid. So. Yeah, and one other thing, I guess, it's just kind of part of signing up to buy Yeti is that the Switch Infinity Link is... I would say more similar to a suspension component rather than a frame component, you know, as far as maintenance goes. So you'll potentially see more maintenance with the bike. Um, it sounds like it's said to have a longer service intervals given the, the redesign of the Switch Infinity on the Turk models. And that hardware is retrofittable to the C series as well as the SB150. So you can retrofit the updated seals and hardware to that. Mm. Um, and that, that could extend your service interval. Regardless, it's going to require service like a suspension component. So just kind of, 
yeah so it, some, something you get into if you buy this bike right yep yeah so. yeah cool all right you've spent time on a bunch of different enduro bikes in the last year or so can you tell us what those bikes are and how does this compare to them yeah this year i've ridden the norco range the cannondale jekyll the yt capra santa cruz mega tower and now this in pretty much all the same types of terrain they've all been ridden here and uh yeah i think some of those do some things really well that would cater more to like stuff you'd ride on a downhill bike and then there's others that cater well to i think a wider variety of trails and this is a bike that caters to a really wide variety of trails and kind of i mean it was kind of really hard to find negative aspects to the ride characteristics because it's just yeah it's really good everywhere um the mega tower is the other bike that i felt the same way about where it just kind of you could do no wrong and i think for generating speed and kind of lower speed this bike may have an advantage um but they yeah. honestly are pretty equal in the descending category so this may have an edge over the mega tower but it's the top two bike for sure okay yeah on the way home yesterday you mentioned like you feel like you could have on on a pump track like you're in that kind of environment with the 160 yeah not like to ride it all day but if For you're sure. just going to roll through pump track at the end of your ride and wanted to like jump and manual some stuff might be a little sicker on the 160 than a uh, mega tower but okay. they can both you know ride a pump track as well as any 160 <laughs> plus mill bike can but yeah it's sick cool all right who would you say the SB160 is for besides people that bring home half a million dollars a year. Yeah, so if you're just balling out of control, it's a great option. Um, and then, um, but also, I think realistically, like if you wanted to race enduro, obviously it's a one of the best bikes on the market. And also, if you want like a reliable trail bike just to ride every day, I don't see it having too many issues. Like we mentioned, the maintenance thing with the Switch Infinity Links. Again, that's something if you, you're signing up for it, if you're getting a Yeti. Um, but I think it's more of like, I mean, it's been four years since the last frame design. So I look at it as maybe it's more of like a long-term solution if you want to get an enduro bike and not get a new bike every year, something that you can build on and just maintain. Uh, I think you should, yeah, this is a bike to consider. It's, an, you know, very high buy-in, but consider buying and selling, you know, a bike every two years you'd be two bikes in by the time that this bike's probably going to get updated again and hmm. yeah i think it's uh yeah one of the best bikes you can get so <laughs> cool a lot yeah. of people benefit from it yeah look at it as almost more like investment type bike than disposable bike yeah like the latest newest thing will, will always be out but i think this is going to be relevant for a long time and like if you yeah. i mean we showed the comparison between the two frames it's they didn't really change much because it seems like it, yeah, was already working well and now it just works a little better. Yep. Cool. Anything in the chat there? Let's dig in. It seems like there's a lot of, uh, a lot of price complaints. Someone mentioned the stack height on the large, which you referred to that, you yeah. know, if, if you haven't been watching yet or if you came in late that Johnny took the stock 20 mil rise bars off and put on 38 mil rise bars got going on there okay this is a comment or related to a comment in there but this is a 160 bike your kind of typical bike that you ride here is more like trail bike travel like 130 140 yeah i would generally go for like 140 okay would you let this replace that uh yeah honestly i mean it the way that it pedals and like carries speed it almost feels like you've got a 140 bike in those situations and then when you start hitting stuff fast you feel like you get the full travel out of it and uh i think that has a lot to do with the switch infinity it seems like it kind of hits a halfway point and does something different um yeah so cool working how it's supposed to sweet you know there are relevant comments in the chat there mm. other than wow this is expensive yeah it's kind of what we've discussed part of it but there. again like yeah if it's if you're not if you're looking at keeping the bike for a number of years and you know riding it a lot it, 
I, I think, yeah, it's just something that you consider, okay, I'm going to buy a bike every three or four years rather than every other year to get the latest geometry. Like it's, they've, yeah, they've updated it to be more modern. And I think it doesn't make much sense to go much further than where it is for now, at least we'll see. Cool. All right. On our site, we do star ratings, zero, like one star to five stars descending. What do you give it? Five for sure. Climbing. What do you give it? I've also didn't hit the pedals, didn't really have any pedal bob, didn't take any extra energy to climb it really. Um, I rode his size XL around the other day and I got up stuff I didn't think I could get up either and it was still sprung for him, but it's not saying much, but yeah, I thought it climbed pretty well. Uh, fun factor. Uh, also, like five, honestly, it was, it was great. It, okay. it really does the best both worlds. Value? Like three and a half. Yeah, three, three and a half. Yeah. With that said, what's your overall rating on the bike? Uh, five overall. Yeah. Yeah. Five star bike. Yep. We know price is a big issue, but Toyota Yaris, you know, might be the cheapest car out there. You give it five stars for its price and performance, but a Porsche is going to be there too, right? So, ooh, five star bike. Yeah. Like I said, one of the best bikes I've ridden this year. Yeah. Awesome. And it was fun to ride and watch you yesterday. And the day before. And it was fun to ride. Yeah, I bet it was. <laughs> Sweet. Ew, with that, we're going to sign off. Thanks for participating in the chat and listening to all that Johnny has to say. I hope you learned a little bit about the new SB160. There'll be more information on our website, vitalmtb.com. Follow us on Instagram, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff that vloggers do. And yeah, hope you found it informative. We'll see you out on the trails. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>